All right, in this video, video number three of how to graph a line, and we're going to be using intercepts, graphing using intercepts. Graph the line given below by finding the x and y intercepts. So we have this linear equation here. And the reason why it's a linear equation is because we have a x and a y, and the understood exponents of both x and y are one. That is negative x to the first plus 2y to the first. You don't see a squared or a cubed or anything weird there. Therefore, we have a linear function. Now, if we go back to video number one, we used a technique called point plotting. I'm going to use this technique, but we only have to plot two points. To plot any line on a graph, all you need is two points. The two points I'm going to use here are the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So I have my t-chart, and to find an x-intercept or a y-intercept, it does not matter which one we do here, but let's suppose we want to find the y-intercept up here, okay? So if I had a dot right there, or a dot right here, or a dot right here, it does not matter. Any of these dots would be y-intercepts because they cross the y-axis. Now, take note of the order pairs. We have 0, 8. We have... 0, 2, we have 0, negative 1 for that dot right there, and down here we have 0, negative 6. What do these dots have in common? Anytime you have a y-intercept, the x value will always be 0. Hmm, all right, so let's take that into consideration. The x value is always going to be 0. With that said, let's take this zero value and let's plug it into x. Therefore, we have negative zero plus two y is equal to six. All I did here is I took that zero, I plugged it into that x, therefore we have negative zero plus two y is equal to six. That's what I got right here. Well, negative zero is still zero, so all of that junk is gone. Let's bring down what we have left. Two y is equal to six. And now let's solve for y. Dividing both sides by 2, we get y is equal to 3. Therefore, when x was equal to 0, we get a y value of 3. This is an ordered pair. It is our y-intercept, and 0, 3 lies right there. So what we just found there is we found the y-intercept. And you always let x be 0 when you're trying to find a y-intercept. Do not forget that. All right, so now let's think about x-intercepts. This would be an x-intercept, this would be an x-intercept, this would be an x-intercept. Well, let's write down some order pairs. Over here we got 10 comma zero, right here we got six comma zero, and over here we got negative four comma zero. What do these x-intercepts, these dots on the x-axis have in common? The y value is always zero. So very similar here, except now we are going to plug zero into y. I'm going to erase what we wrote down just a moment ago to find the y-intercept, but look at what we're doing here. Every single time we cross the x-axis, the y value is equal to zero. Therefore, I'm going to plug zero into the y spot in this linear equation up here. So we have negative x, plus two times y, well, I'm letting y be zero now, so plus two times zero, that is equal to six. Now let's solve this equation for x. We're letting y be zero, we plug zero into that y spot, well, two times zero, it goes away. Bring down your negative x, be careful with that, is equal to six. Divide both sides by negative 1 to get the x by itself because that is an understood negative 1 there. And we have an x value of 6 divided by negative 1 is negative 6. Therefore, our x-intercept is going to be negative 6 comma 0. Let me come over here and erase these blue dots that I put down just for teaching purposes. And this is the x-intercept that we want negative six comma zero, that is that order pair right there. Using just these two dots, we have a line that will pass through those two dots, and this is our line. If you've watched part one and part two, here's part one, here's part two, and now look at part three, it's the same line, but yet this looks different. 
So what I would encourage you to do here before we move on to part four, video number four, yeah, we can use X and Y intercepts to graph a line, but sometimes these numbers may turn out to be not so nice. So I wouldn't recommend doing this technique every single time, especially when you start getting values of X or Y that are not nice, such as repeated decimals or ugly fractions. But this example here was fine. We have a nice Y intercept, we have a nice X intercept. In video number four, we're going to start exploring more problems like this where the function, the linear function here, is not written in what's called slope intercept form. As a matter of fact, this is more of what we call standard form, the standard form of a linear equation or a linear function. But we'll explore that more in video number four. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.